we had a question from Rodrigo Loret. He says, do you guys think good design is measurable? Oof. That's an interesting question. It's a, it's a very interesting question. I feel like it could be an entire topic. Yeah. Uh, is good design measurable? He, he's almost saying he kind of wishes that there was like a better business bureau for design, <laughs> like uh, a better design bureau or something where is, like there was some sort of gauge of like, oh, this product has four stars on good design. Bureau. Isn't that what Supreme is? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you get that Supreme logo slapped on the oh, product. Oh, it means it's good design. It means it's good design. That's the better business bureau. Um, I mean, we do have those institutions in forms of awards. You know, you, you got the idea awards or like, right. I guess you have the red dot arguably Mm -hmm. um but i don't think necessarily a design award constitutes a good design right so what to you constitutes a good design Uh, that's that's a whole like that could be a whole podcast i don't i feel like obviously a good design is the perfect combination of beautiful aesthetic and you know perfect functionality right maybe not perfect functionality great functionality so it's those two things. I think you can have something that's beautiful, um, but not functional, and that's art. And then you have something that's purely functional, but not beautiful, and that's engineering. Mm-hmm. Um, and design falls in the middle. Right. That, that That's a very general statement. But yeah. I, I don't know if there's some sort of way you can measure that. Like, is there a literal, like, checklist of good design? Yeah. I, I think almost what Rodrigo's asking is, like, or is it Rodrigo or Rodrigo? Oh, I said Rodrigo, right? Yeah. They're asking, is there a way that I can like have my design and then pull up some sort of list and say, oh, it has a one inch radius fillets and this and that. that." (laughs) You know, is there a way to actually measure good design? I, I don't know. I don't think so. It's very, it's very difficult. I mean, you can sort of use like, um, proportion you know sort of yeah. like you can uh, you can try to use things like golden ratio no, to like don't. <laughs> to figure out that's a whole nother thing you know you're uh like if you have the good right proportional aesthetic and um i, I, I would agree i think design is subjective i think it's subjective to to a lot of degree i don't think it's purely subjective but i think a lot of the minutia of like you know, is this radius big enough or uh-huh. is this, this line break in the right place? Mm-hmm. Like those small, small di- details of, you know, proportion and balance and shape and form. That's all subjective. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a gazillion different like glasses, drinking glasses. They all have different shapes and forms. Mm-hmm. It's hard to judge which one's better than the other. Right. One. But I will, I will provide a counterpoint to that, which is I remember my old manager telling me this story about when he worked, he was, he was an older gentleman, worked at Nordstrom when he was really young, like, um, and he was in charge of like the sock wall or something. And, um, he, uh, he was telling us this story about like, you know, you have all these socks of different patterns, but but realistically, what people are going to buy are the black and blue socks. You know, I think design is kind of subjective up until the point of sale. And then I think there are items that just sell better than other items. So, so are you saying that the measurable the measurable part of good design is how much it sells. Cause I don't know if I can agree with that. Like there, there are a lot of bad design things that sell well, but does that mean they're good design? Like, I mean, you think about like the fidget spinner or like some like tchotchke product that like sold millions, Mm -hmm. but it, it used ball bearings in the place of weights. Mm -hmm. You remember the first fidget spinner, it had the tri shape. Mm -hmm. And the only reason those, three extra bearings ball bearings were on the outside was just for the weight right i mean i guess you could spin it yeah you only needed the ball bearing in the center though yeah i I don't know it's just like i think you go down a dangerous road if you're looking for sales only yeah but i think that there's 
I don't think that sales should just be completely ignored at Ooh. the same time. What about what about this is a measure, measurable asset? What about people posting on social media about a product? Mm. I mean, you think about when you see. I mean. I don't know if you've done this or not, but occasionally I go on Instagram and search up some of my products I've designed, mm -hmm. you know, for, for brands like Chuck It or JW, um, the, you know, these dog products. Right. And I'll see dogs like using it and, you know, the owner's like, I just got a new toy. Yeah. You know, Fido loves it. Yeah. Is that a measurable asset? I'm not sure because sometimes I feel like people are just <laughs> searching for content. They're like, oh, I bought this thing. Check it out. Like, uh, are they actually happy with it or do they just want to post it on social media, post it on social media? I mean, I think that there's there's definitely something to the share because like, you know, I don't know. I, I have definitely seen a, a certain products shared, but it's like I, I'm just kind of thinking about like something like the 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 Werner Panton chair the uh you know the the cantilever one piece plastic chair okay you know yes. what i'm talking yep. about mm -hmm. this uh i mean this chair has has achieved a level of infamy and it's purely aesthetic and i would say not very functional i would say that like obviously it functions as a chair but it's like to move it around is a huge hassle. I don't know why anybody would use it for a dining room chair or anything like that. But it's like, it's this iconic design. Yeah. It's like the, like, it's the designer's design chair that everybody has adopted. I mean, <laughs> that's a, oh, this is a good topic because now we're getting to the point where designers can get, can fetishize design so much where their designs aren't even good mm. for the public, right? Like mm -hmm. in the example of this chair, like it's a beautiful chair, like aesthetically it looks amazing, but functionally it kind of lacks a bit of that, that the, that everyday chair that mm -hmm. you just need. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of fails at being a good design. In, but it's, when in fact it fails it actually, at being a functional design. Yeah. But, but I isn't mean, that part of good the, design at the time? It was a revolutionary, like, technology to be able to do that chair. Like, Werner Panton had to go to a lot of factories is to it, find someone who would make that chair. Is it injection molded? It's, uh, I think, I'm not sure if it was injection molded initially, but I believe that it is now. I, I don't remember the process Okay. Um, initially. It might have been injection, but I think it had to be reinforced in some way. Hmm. I know that now it kind of has like ribs underneath like right. where where the knee breaks. Right. Um uh but yeah, I think um I just think it's so interesting because like any sort of interior design magazine you look through like you'll find a Panton chair and it's like is that is it good? Like people like it. It's it has sold well throughout like it and it's iconic. It's a, is I, that is it good? I think I think the consensus is that as of now, good design isn't measurable. We don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think there's some culmination of different factors that can point to a good design, but I don't think there is a analytical way to measure good design. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's a purely analytical way to do it, but I do think that it's a, it's again this uh, development of a type of intuition around design. Yeah. Um, hmm. But, I yeah, I, that was a great question, Rodrigo. I feel like yeah, we should have just made that whole podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for sending it in. 